Hello, I'm Roger Bisby from the Skill Builder channel. Now, some time ago, if those of you with long memories might remember that we did a video from Red Hill Plumbing here at the trade counter on how to cut and join supply pipes and central heating pipes, things like that. And when we did that video, we promised we'd come back and show you how to do waste pipes. So here we are back after such a long time. Sorry about that and we're gonna show you a little bit about how to cut and join waste pipes. Now, it's a confusing world really, because at any time, if you're a plumber, you can go to somebody's house and you can come up against a variety of different waste pipes. And you think, oh, what am I doing here? So what we have is this, which I would call fairly okay. nasty right, stuff. This is nice. polypropylene okay, thank you very pipe. Much. This is a push fit system. Now, this so. will not, allow you to solve and weld it. it everything is done there's an o-ring in there which it helps to put a bit of silicon in and then there's a pipe there and that pushes in until you can feel it as i say a little bit of the lubrication helps until you feel it hit the stop now this stuff moves about and expands and contracts and causes all kinds of problems which is why I don't know any professional plumbers who actually use it, but for a DIYer, it can do the job. The only trouble is that if you cut it and you end up with a square end here, as opposed to what comes out of the factory, which is a slightly tapered end, which is chamfered off. If you cut it, you then need to just give that a light filing off at the end in order to stop it damaging that o-ring because if you put that into there with that square end and you push it past that o-ring if you could actually physically manage to do it you will find that you'll push that o-ring out of place and you'll get a leak so the important thing with this is that you cut it you chamfer it you put a little bit of silicon lubrication the silicon grease not silicon sealant a little bit of silicon some people would use washing up liquid or something like that and just push it in and then you can feel it hit the stop eventually and as i say it's got its place this stuff but it's really not what the professional uses now the other bit of confusion that comes in is that people often think that they can take a solvent weld cement, which is what we use for joining waste pipes together, and stick this pipe to these fittings. And you can see that that's quite a loose fit in there. So again, as a plumber, I've been to houses where I've seen them try to fix one of these fittings onto this kind of pipe, and they've bodged all kinds of things like silicon, sealant in the end you name it they tape it up they do anything but basically what you're looking at here is two nominally the same because they're both used in this case this would be inch and a quarter for basin waste and things like that they're nominally the same but they're actually different and the reason they're different is to stop you joining them together so the, the professional system uses a different pipe instead of using polypropylene this is an abs pipe it's a harder pipe and it's slightly larger so it goes in to the solvent weld fitting absolutely snugly you can see there's no play on that at all and what we do with that is we get a little bit of solvent weld cement now it's important that the end of the pipe is clean and you can buy cleaner solvent cleaner just to wipe around it i actually do it just by rubbing a little bit of emery cloth fine emery cloth around the end just to re remove any kind of production grease that they use and then excuse me all over the counter a little bit of solvent weld now some people would also this is runny this stuff this when it gets old it gets a little bit gooier if you like and then what people would also do is just wipe a little bit in there now when you join those together and you've got a limited time to join them together before they go off if it's hot you can see i've used far too much there and then we just give it a twist round. and if you can it's important to give it a twist round because if you don't there could be a dry spot Sh shouldn't do that really look at that <laughs> There could be a dry spot on that pipe that hasn't been stuck, but that will stick. That will be absolutely 100% because what's happening, as the name suggests, it's not actually a glue. 
what's happening is it, it's a solvent well cement it's melting the two surfaces the surface of the fitting and the pipe together and it's welding them together when that is stuck that is stuck so that's what we call a swept T now the idea of a swept T is that the water will come down there and it will sweep round to go that way I have actually seen these put on the wrong way round where people expect the water to run back that way so just a little point to remember when you put these T's on is to get the sweep going in the right direction otherwise you can get a blockage we also have what we call a 135 or a 45 degree elbow here which allows you to get an angle if you're not trying to go directly up and a bend now this is what we call a sweep bend and wherever possible you're better off using a swept bend rather than a knuckle bend because you get a better flow less likelihood of blockage and in basin wastes that's particularly important because basin waste by the time they've got a bit of hair and gunge in them tend to run slowly so if you can get swept bends into your system you're a lot better off if you can't unfortunately sometimes you have to use just through lack of space what they call a knuckle bend which as you can see is a lot sharper than using the swept bend so just make the job as easy as you can make the flow as easy as you can through the pipe work and you'll be absolutely fine now at some point or another you might want to join this pipe which i told you is a smaller pipe to the bigger pipe you can do that just by using universal couplings now these are mechanical couplings mcalpine probably being the most famous make and we simply take the ring off inside there is an o-ring there's actually a slip ring inside there as well so that it doesn't do that now the o-ring has got a taper on it and we put the o-ring over the pipe like so we don't need to use any adhesive any lubricants or anything like that with this and then we just push it on until it hits the stop on the pipe you can see that's quite a, a long way in and then all you do very very simply is to tighten it up now when you tighten it up there is no need to use a wrench on this you do get people that think okay i'll give it a good old tight and they get a pair of grips and they start tightening that nut you don't need to because that is absolutely watertight and solid just like that on that hand tight you can tell i didn't even do it up that much but if you gave it a little bit of welly tighten it up a bit more you find that that is almost impossible to take off so a very good little fitting gets you out of trouble plumbers use them all the time to join different things and of course it doesn't require using any kind of adhesive that will also work perfectly well on our slightly smaller pipe just show you just in case you don't believe it why would you believe me so there we have important put the taper the right way round on there same same only different you can see that that does exactly the same job so a universal fitting if you've got any doubt at all you can use those you can even get an elbow you can get tees you can get all kinds of things and of course when you go into traps onto the the u-bend then that's what you would tend to use so that's your mechanical fitting all this i'm showing you by the way is in inch and a quarter which is 32 millimeter and this is used just for basin waste you wouldn't use this for anything else like a bath or a sink when you use when you're connecting up a sink or you're connecting up a bath you want the 40 millimeter pipe or the inch and a half pipe as we used to call it or even sometimes if you're doing a sink and you're putting a couple of sinks into it i like to use a 50 millimeter pipe which is a two inch pipe it's a bit bulkier but it gives you a better flow rate less chance of blockages also very useful let me just show you this this is an access plug now if you had a a pipe coming in there going off there you might just put an access plug in the end there solvent weld cement again pop that into there and then at any time in the future if you need to get there to clear a blockage you can just take the cap off and you can get in there with a rod or whatever you like 
Now, at some point, you're going to need to cut a pipe, and we used to do this with a hacksaw, but the trouble with a hacksaw is that the blade tends to meander sometimes, you don't get a nice square cut. So, my favourite time-honoured method of doing it is with a little fine tooth saw like this, which is from Barco, but you can get other ones. So, very easy. Not too coarse a tooth. And you can see that you get a reasonable cut, but you do get all that swarf around there. Now we need to clean that off, either with a standing knife or a bit of emery cloth, because that will catch, and all the hairs, all the bits from the trap will end up catching on there and causing a blockage. This is the polypropylene pipe, this is the DIY pipe, and you can see it's a bit more ragged. Let me just show you, as a comparison, how this cuts. This is a slightly harder pipe. You can hear the difference. And you can see that that makes a cleaner cut. Quite honestly, you probably get away with that without doing anything, but as I say, if you've got a knife, you can just run around the inside, clean it up, it'll be much better. But that would be ready now for sticking and joining. Now this is a pipe slice. And these used to be just for uh, copper pipe and things like that, but now they make them for waste pipe and they're very, very convenient little. Okay. And if you're getting paid by the hour, <laughs> then that's an option, but not for me. Now we come on to cutters. These have been around a few years, ratchet cutter. If we go on to this pipe work here, you can see this thing's supposed to ratchet up here. Yeah? You can see it's grabbing the ratchet now. Now it's gonna squash the pipe in to a certain extent. And at that point, a little turn just to get it started means that you can finish the job. Kind of okay, but not okay. If you look at it, it's got a, a little bit of an uneven end there. It didn't do a fantastic job. I would suggest that's because that jaw is not very wide. Now these are about eight quid from Tool Station and Screwfix and people like that. And uh, they're really the cheapest of the cheap. I, as a professional, wouldn't bother using one of those. Next up in the range is this one from Ox, which is quite an interesting looking thing. Ratchet cutter, same game. So you pull it open. Now you'll see that it's got a flat edge here. And that flat edge is quite important because the way it's designed to work is on the bench. If you try to operate that, holding it up, you'll find it very difficult to actually get a start on it. It will work, but a little twist like that. And you'll see that you get a cut. But if you put it on the bench and you just rest the pipe down there, you'll see that you can just and it's that point there where it pierces the pipe. That's the important thing. Now, Ox say you don't have to twist this pipe and you can work very close to the end of a pipe. So if you're trimming off a little bit, it works well. And you can see that it's pierced the pipe now by just by the design of that jaw. And it goes through and to me is a pretty square cut. That's good enough. Now, if you're using that in a push fit of any kind, you would obviously need to just taper it off you still wouldn't have that as a as a push fit joint so if you were using the other pipe and you were trying to go into this fitting we would still want to just give it a light run off with a file so still fairly labor intensive but that's good that's about 20 pounds from red hill plumbing is that right gary 20 quid more uh yeah it was about 30 quid, about 30, quid. 30 quid so this is what i might call the rolls royce the rothenberger the german made or German in origin anyway. And that flicks open with that safety thing. So once it closes up like that, you gotta flick it open, you're ready to roll. Now this, again, you can see what inspired the Ox design here. The only difference between this and the Ox one is that it doesn't have that flat edge for putting on the bench, but it seems to work pretty well. Let's have a go on the bench just to compare it. 
and you can see is it going to push through it's distorting that pipe to what I would consider to be quite an unacceptable level but it does actually in the end it will go through and give you what I would say is the nicest cut of the three that we've tested let's just try that twisting it right so we get it tight and then we just give it a little turn like that just to get it started and to save squashing that pipe end down too much I mean the pipe will recover so it's not the end of the world but it's nice if you don't squash it too much if you're a professional 20 quid more than that is probably worth well it's definitely worth the investment so nice choice there's that there's that and at that end if you're a DIY you might want to use that but I would personally go for a little saw so at some point obviously you're going to want to connect this to a bath or a sink or a basin and for that you would use a u-bend or a trap now i'll just show you this one we could do a whole video on traps alone but you can see that the connection to the trap is exactly the same as i showed you on those mechanical fittings you've got a nut you've got a ring put the nut on first and then that just simply goes into there and screws up so very very nice that won't leak that's a that's a really nice fitting now I'll just show you this just out of interest you can see this little thing here that's an air admittance valve that's what we call a clack valve now if you've got a basin waste and you can hear it glug 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 all the time that's because there's a vacuum and it's trying to pull the, the water out of a trap and that little air admittance valve allows it just to suck in a little bit of air into the pipe and it breaks the vacuum on it so that's a nice little refinement you can get and you can also get in this case an adjustable trap so that if it doesn't quite work out from the bottom of your basin to your waist you can just simply adjust that up and down slide it up and down in there tighten it up you've got the perfect fit so very simple little things to use as I say we didn't really want to get onto traps but I thought I'd just show you that while we were here so my thanks to Red Hill Plumbing don't forget they've also got a lovely showroom in Maidstone and they're up for showroom of the year this year so check that one out and uh, also come and visit Red Hill Plumbing here so if you enjoyed this video don't forget to watch the prequel which was the cutting and joining of supply pipes or if you're really ambitious watch how to fit a bathroom the complete series in one go Grab yourself a cup of coffee and a sandwich because it's a long watch.